guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. You know, I've done a lot of videos recently on tube fishing and uh, some of the questions that I've gotten have been based on how to rig the tube because I've mentioned how versatile a tube bait can be. And it truly is a multi-species bass bait. And it's a bait that if you rig properly, you can fish anywhere from inches of water to 50 feet of water through grass, through wood, through rock, suspended fish, you can do it all with a tube. It is probably one of the most uh, misunderstood baits in my opinion, because people recognize it as only a smallmouth bait for fishing deep gravel bars or rock bars. The reality is though, you can fish it almost anywhere in all species of bass. In fact, all species of fish for the most part will eat a tube. If you look at other, uh, fish species out there, whether it's crappie and panfish, they love little one inch tubes all the way up to halibut. I mean, they fish halibut, halibut with giant tubes. So there's a lot of species out there that'll eat a tube. It is a fantastic bait fish mimicking lure. And it's something that you should have in your arsenal. So what I want to talk about today has to do with a lot of the questions that I got on tubes. And that's how do you rig the tube? So I've got here a bunch of different ways that I like to utilize a tube and the different rigging techniques. So that's what I want to go over. Obviously, we have just our standard tube. This is just a small, uh, this is a two inch tube, one of my favorites for smallmouth with just a simple tube hook slid up the inside with an exposed hook. This is the most basic way to fish a tube bait and one of the most uh, productive ways to fish a tube bait. The problem is it is an extremely snaggy bait if you're fishing around anything other than hard bottom. And even around rock, it can be a pretty snaggy bait if you're throwing a heavier head. Now there's a couple of things that I like to do to counter that. One, you know, if you're fishing, uh, especially on the Great Lakes, one thing that's become popular are to use jig heads like this poor boys, this is the Gobi profile head, and they have very wide heads. They're slender, very wide. They're meant to push the tube head out. So they're real wide and fat at the top. They're kind of narrower, you, know, you still get your tube shape, but they definitely bulb out at the top. And what that does is it allows the bait to glide more. And when fishing around rock, it becomes a little less snaggy because the head of the bait is wider making it harder to fall down into some of those rock cracks. But if I'm fishing on the Great Lakes around gobies, I really have gone to more of this goby style head, this wider range head, because I do feel like you get better gliding motion and it does mimic a goby better, which has a big bulbous head on it. Uh, but so that's still a simple exposed hook. It's just a little bit different of a style of a jig head. Another thing that I like to do and again, this is a simple tube and I wanted to show you this little trick. So this is a bite me tubes jig head. So it's just a standard tube jig, but it's got a rattle built in. Nice loud rattle. I do like that in tubes, especially if I'm stroking the tube in open water. I like that. I think it helps draw the fish. But in this case, the hook shank is a little small for this tube. You can see how the tube gets concave. All you have to do to fix that is to grab a pair of scissors and cut, I don't know, a quarter inch up the tube so that your, your hook will slide up that crack. You can see I cut just a little bit there, but the, the hook shank will fit up that. It'll straighten the tube up and give you a much more natural fall. You do not want your tube to be caved in like that, but a good tube with a rattle in it is a great way if you're stroking the tube. That's another way I like to fish it. You can go watch the video I did on how to stroke a jig. You fish the tube in the exact same manner. So that's good for open water fishing. If you're fishing around some grass or you're fishing around some uh, some wood or some you know snags, that's when I would go with a stupid tube rig. So this is a tube head that's rigged on a, a wide gap. 60 degree hook shank. All the tube heads that I like to utilize are generally going to be a 60 degree hook. Uh, so your eye is at a 60 degree angle to the shank of the hook. But when you're fishing a stupid tube, this allows you to rig it in a weedless manner and, and get it through pretty much any cover. It's extremely weedless bait uh, and it works great around 
uh, grass and, and wood, and you can fish a tube in the exact same way that you would fish an exposed hook, but it's weedless now. Uh, if you want, I got a video out on how to make the stupid tube, so you can go watch that to see how to rig this, because there is a little bit of special way to do it and a special hook that you'll need. Another way I love to fish a tube is just on your basic Texas rig. Uh, you know, a tube is a great bait for flipping around heavy cover because it is a nice streamlined bait. Like if you're punching grass with it, punching milfoil, it goes through the milfoil extremely well. Uh, you know, it's a really good bait to fish, to flip around current as well, because it's a nice sleek profile bait that gets through the current. You don't have a bunch of appendages that will grab the current or that the current will grab and push your bait out of the strike zone. I have found that a tube will get you down into those areas that the fish are hiding really well. A lot better than a lot of different style of creature baits. A, a Texas rig is also a great way to uh, fish a tube if you're fishing bedding fish. It's one of the best bedding fish baits that you can utilize. Next up, guys, we've got a drop shot. As you can see, I've got a drop shot here. A drop shot is a really good way to fish a tube, especially these small inch and a half to two and a half inch tubes. Uh, for smallmouth, it's really become a really, really good drop shot bait. It's something that you don't hear many people talk about. But there have been plenty of days for me where I've gone out and I can't get them to bite other drop shot baits. I put a small tube on and all of a sudden it's a game changer. You're catching a lot of fish on it. So I highly recommend small tubes on a drop shot. And then last but not least by any means, I like to fish it on a Carolina rig. So, you know, you whatever leader you want to use, you rig it uh, just in a normal uh, weedless Texas style manner that you would hook up any sort of uh, normal Carolina rig with. But one nice thing about tubes that you can do is you can float a tube. So one thing I like to do is take some of these styrofoam uh, ear protection pieces. You know, these are, you buy these in bulk for super cheap and you can take that and slide it right up the tube and that will float your tube off the bottom. So if you're fishing it in a with a Carolina rig, you know you're dragging around the bottom, and your tube is just going to float all over. You got to slide it up. You got to kind of just squeeze it up towards the head. Once you get it past the head, you can then uh, re-rig it, and you're not going to have any issue with that getting in the way of your bait. But your tube now will float off the bottom, and if it doesn't float because you still have heavy mass in the plastic it will give it a really nice gliding motion. So you don't necessarily want your bait to float up from your weight, but if it hangs up in the air, it becomes a much better target for those fish to eat. A uh, really good way to fish a Carolina rig. You can do the same with small pieces of styrofoam and other things that will float the tube. I personally don't like to use the styrofoam because it can break up and fall out. And I just feel like I'd rather keep the earpiece and they seem to stay in significantly better for me so the key with that is trying to find the right tube uh, that will fit that that earpiece really well uh, you know in this case I like to throw a bigger tube if I'm throwing a, a Carolina rig but those are the ways guys there's there's really no way you cannot fish a tube those are the ways that I like to do it if I miss something guys put it up in the uh, comment section I mean it's also a really good bait for trailers if you're throwing it you can throw it on a buzz bait. You can put it on a spinner bait. You can use it as a trailer. It's a really good bait for that too. Um, and it's another bait that you can sometimes utilize in the same fashion you would throw, say, a soft plastic jerk bait. You know, you can rig a, a tube in a similar manner and get a lot of that gliding motion to fish for some suspended fish or schooling fish. But there's no real wrong way to throw a tube. I mean, you can pretty much make a tube work for whatever technique that you're wanting to fish. It may take different rigging styles or different uh, rigging hooks in order to make it work but don't rule out the tube guys it is it is a bait that catches them really well one of the biggest things for me that has proven this is that it really is one of the best bed fishing baits out there and the fish seem to respond to it really well you may throw four or five other plastic options into a bed fish doesn't show a lot of interest you put a tube on and all of a sudden it's like they just they view it differently. And that's not just during the spring when they're on beds. 
that's all year round that the fish look at a tube differently. I, I think it's a much more natural looking presentation than we give it. Uh, so guys, don't forget about the tube. If you got other options that you like to, uh, to utilize the tube for, throw it in the comment section so that everyone else can learn from you guys as well. And uh, stay tuned. We got new tips coming out tomorrow.